In a very significant judgment on Wednesday, 1st December, the Bombay High Court has held that Sudha Bhardwaj, the noted activist, lawyer, and accused in the Bhima Koregaon case, is entitled to be released on default bail. Now, Bhardwaj has been in jail for the last three years in this case, along with several other accused. All other requests for bail, including on medical grounds, have been rejected so far by the courts, especially because of the involvement of the UAPA in this case. But now, finally, the High Court has said she has to be released on default bail. Now, this doesn't mean she's going to be released immediately. Uh, the uh, High Court has said that a special NI court, she's to be produced before that on 8th December, this special NI court in Mumbai, will then order her release after setting any relevant bail conditions, as you know, uh, whether it's having sureties, not tampering with the investigation, cooperating with uh, the NIA, and not leaving town without taking their permission. So, you know, the kind of basic things which happen in that matter. Uh, along with her, another eight accused had actually also filed a request for default bail on similar grounds, but their applications have been rejected by the Bombay High Court. So why has the High Court accepted Sudha Bhardwaj's bail plea and rejected the pleas of the other eight accused? That's what we're going to cover here today. Now, to understand what's really going on here, you have to understand what default bail is. Default bail is something which comes from the Code of Criminal Procedure. It's meant as a safeguard against the police just, you know, sort of getting you sent to judicial custody and forgetting about the case. The idea is quite simple that the police have a stipulated time period within which they have to file a charge sheet, uh, which shows that, you know, they've actually taken their investigation to its conclusion and therefore set the case on a path to trial. If the police fail to submit a charge sheet within the stipulated period of time, then an accused is entitled to default bail as a matter of right and they get to walk out of jail. Now, in general, when it comes to serious offences, the uh, time periods given to the police, the deadline which they have, the time limit is 90 days. When you're dealing with offences under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, the UAPA, this can go up to 180 days if they get a valid extension order from a court. Now, in the case of Bhadwaj, and pretty much all the other accused in this case as well, the charge sheets uh, filed against them were filed long after 90 days had gone by from the time they'd actually been uh, sent to judicial custody. Now, this on paper should have meant immediately, obviously, default bail. But <clears throat> as we said, if there is a valid order granting an extension by a court, then it can go up to 180 days since there are UAPA offences involved. And that's what sort of happened here. You had these uh, Pune Sessions Court judges granted extensions of time whenever requested by the police at that time uh, who were investigating the matter uh, to file their charge sheets, which was, and the, the charge sheets were eventually filed within 180 days. Now, in Bhardwaj's case, she was arrested on 28th August 2018. The charge sheet against her was eventually filed on 21st February 2019. And an extension of time had been granted on 26 November 2018 to ensure that there was no issue with this. What Bhardwaj was able to successfully show was that the Sessions Court judge who passed the order granting an extension of time to the police was didn't have jurisdiction to pass that order and therefore the order itself was invalid. There was no valid extension of time for the police for filing their charge sheet. Now this was because, and this is the slightly technical issue, is that the NIA Act, when it was brought in in 2008, was trying to streamline the way terror offences would be dealt with. And since the UAPA deals with terror offences, the idea was that you would have these special NIA courts set up, which would be exclusively dealing with these kind of matters. Now, there's a bit of confusion which has come in over time over whether only cases investigated by the NIA had to be dealt with by the special courts or not. This was all eventually clarified by the Supreme Court, which said that once certain courts have been designated as special courts in a state, which Maharashtra had done in 2017. Then after that, every matter relating to the UAPA, which is one of the scheduled offences under the NIA Act, every matter, whether it's their trial or even pre-trial issues, including extension of time for filing a charge sheet, have to be heard only by those special courts. What had happened here was that instead, judges who were not designated as special courts had been passing orders in the Bhima Koregao case, including for Bharatwaj. So what the court said was there was therefore no valid extension of time. Therefore, Bhardwaj had been entitled to default bail the moment the 90-day period uh, expired from the time she had been sent to judicial custody. And as a result, she was able to get default bail. The problem now comes, but what about the other eight accused? So we're looking at Varavara Rao, Vernon Gonzalez, and Arun Ferreira, these three who were arrested at the same time 
as Sudha Bhadwaj. And then the first five people who are arrested in this case, Shoma Sen, Rona Wilson, Sudhir uh, Dhawale, Surendra Gudling, and Mahesh Rao. Now for them, unfortunately, they had not filed their request for default bail in time. Now, this seems a bit strange. You might think that something as a technicality like that should make a difference. But unfortunately, when it comes to the law on this, on default bail, there is a long set of rulings which seem to hold, which, which say that if you don't file your application for default bail on time, you lose that right to, you lose the ability to exercise that right. And this was confirmed and clarified by a Supreme Court judgment in on 26 October 2020, the M. Ravindran case, where the Supreme Court said that if you don't, that if you don't exercise your right to default bail after that 90 day period sort of is over, and then the police go and actually file a charge sheet or they get a valid extension of time, then you lose your right to default bail. And that is what happened to them because they only filed their applications, all these other eight accused, they filed their applications uh, by May and then June 2019, which was too late because by then, the charge sheets for all of them had already been filed. So unfortunately, the Bombay High Court's hands were tied when it came to those other eight accused. Sudha Bhardwaj, on the other hand, had filed her application back on 26 November 2018. And as a result, she was able to get the benefit of default bail in this case.